I am now an artist in a wider sense. Every man must do his bit in this horrible business. So I have given up painting and bid it adieu for who knows how long to take up the queer business of soldiering. The Artists' Rifles Volunteer Regiment was founded in 1860. Early membership included major artists Byrne Jones, Rossetti, Millet, Leighton and Holman Hunt. The Great War saw a new stream of creative people join its ranks, including writers Wilfred Owen, Edward Thomas and R.C. Sheriff, and artists Paul and John Nash. At the outbreak of the First World War, the artists' rifles were given London-based duties, but soon received orders to embark for France. A second training battalion was formed in England. The regiment's reputation ensured that over 5,000 men applied to join within a week. The second battalion moved to Hare Hall Camp, its home for the rest of the war. It became officially recognized as an officer training corps. Thomas took a train to embark for the new camp. Making the same journey that day was another poet, a new recruit, Wilfred Owen. Owen wrote a postcard to his mother. I was put on guard duty from 9 a.m. yesterday to 9 a.m. today. Miserable time. Not allowed to take off packs or boots during 24 hours. I was with fellows that I don't like. Chumps, all of them. We got enough to eat and I made toast with my bayonet. There was not much challenging to do. I am one of the orderlies again tomorrow. This camping is beginning to get troublesome. Edward Thomas was at Hare Hall for nine months. In a letter to Robert Frost in July 1916, he wrote, I have done very nearly all that I could do here in the way of teaching, lecturing and taking charge of men in and out of doors. My old acquaintances were mostly moving out. The speeding up of things left no chance of enjoying the walks we used to have, so I had to go. Edward Thomas embarked from Southampton for France in January 1917. He was killed in the first hour of the Battle of Arras on 9th of April 1917 and is buried at Agni Military Cemetery. Rain, midnight rain, nothing but the wild rain on this bleak hut and solitude and me remembering again that I shall die and neither hear the rain nor give it thanks for washing me cleaner than I have been since I was born into this solitude. Blessed are the dead that the rain rains upon, but here I pray that none whom once I loved is dying tonight, or lying still awake, solitary, listening to the rain, either in pain or thus in sympathy, helpless among the living and the dead, like a cold water among broken reeds. From July to September 1917, the artists' rifles were in the front line. Among those getting their first taste of the trenches was the artist John Nash, younger brother of Paul. His largest war painting, Oppie Wood Evening 1917, was based on his memories. It was an eerie place. Any explosions of any kind resounded all round you. Among these trees, or what was left of them. The artists were later sent to the Cambrai area. They were in support behind the front line on the 30th of December when a German attack broke through the British defences. The artists were ordered to make a counter-attack with no artillery support and sustained 116 casualties without making their objective. Fifty years later, John Nash wrote to Joseph Darracott at the Imperial War Museum describing the action. It was in fact pure murder and I was lucky to escape untouched. It was bitterly cold and we were easy targets against the snow and in daylight. I think the vivid memory of the occasion helped me when I painted the picture and provoked what intensity of feeling may be found in it. Robert Cedric Sheriff joined the artists in 1916. He spent four grueling months on the Western Front until he was wounded at Passchendaele. This and his service on the Somme was the inspiration for the play Journey's End. The artists served in the front line during February and March 1918. 
and were involved in the retreat of the British Fifth Army in the face of the German offensives in March and April. When the armistice came, the artists' rifles were a few miles south of Mons, where the British Army had first seen action back in 1914. Wilfred Owen was formally discharged by the artist rifles on the 3rd of June 1916 and took up his commission with the Manchester Regiment the following day. In 1917, he suffered severe concussion and trench fever whilst fighting on the Somme and spent a period recuperating at Craig Lockhart War Hospital near Edinburgh. Here, he met Siegfried Sassoon, who read his poems and offered much encouragement. He was posted back to France in 1918, where he won the Military Cross before being killed just a week before the armistice was signed. What passing bells for those who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns, only the stuttering rifles' rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers nor bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells, and bugles calling them from sad shires. What candles may be held to speed them all? Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall.